Imagine a year where the year is a mystery. Uh, uh, Sandro, you, you have to tell us the year. What year is that, Sandro? I'll give you a hint. The year killed it with a candlestick in the piano room. What? what? Uh, the year is 1945. Hello and welcome to Oldie But A Goodie. Oh, my name is Sandro and you've caught me in the year 1945... In the dark of night, on the streets of London, I am tracking down a murderer. Which one? I don't know. But I've heard that there's murderers out here in 1945 in London, and I'm tracking one with my orphan. Orphan, what do you think of this murder? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Indeed, it's a mystery! And I'm a detective. Ah, Detective Sandy. That's what they call me, walking around, walking around. Oh, excuse me, sir. This is a crime scene. You can't be uh, wandering around here. I can do whatever I want, for I am Detective Sandy, and this is my orphan. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Yes, we know it's a mystery, Mr. Orphan. That's that's plain and clear. But... uh... (laughs) <laughs> but um, <laughs> civilians aren't allowed here, except for, of course, uh, Mr. Sherlock. Mr. Sherlock? Who is an actual detective, unlike you, who I suspect is a charlatan. I'm not a charlatan, and you speak of this Sherlock. Do you mean Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes is a fictional character. What, uh, what do you mean? I... <laughs> Absolutely not good, sir. Sherlock Holmes is a good friend of mine. After the, you know, accident in the war and all that, you know, oh he took God. me under his wing. And you're Lestrade, aren't you? You're you're Lestrade. Lest- what? Yes. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I'm Doctor Watson. Oh, uh, well, that that actually makes more sense now that I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> well. You're a terrible detective. <laughs> you're you're not real. Oh, because of all the time meddling. Time meddling. The, my arch enemy uh, probably went back in time and made fictional characters real. You know what? You do kind of sound like <laughs> Sherlock. Actually, maybe you could be some help in this mystery. Does it? Do I sound like Sherlock, or do I just have ADHD? I don't know. <laughs> it's very. It's hard to. It's hard to guess. What, what, what do you think, Orphan? It's a mystery. Hmm, Watson, what's your take on this, on this, on this dead body here? I'm having a look, and it seems like, it seems like he was murdered with an axe. He, uh, he fell from the fourth floor. Oh. (laughs) But then why is there a cut in his head like that in the shape of an axe head? Because we performed a lobotomy. Oh. Well, if he jumped from the window, he was clearly pushed, as you can tell by those hand prints on the back of his shirt. Did you notice that, Watson? Actually, I think that was your orphan. He has flour on his hands and uh, has been patting down the body for the past five minutes. Mm. Orphan, you've been patting down the body for the last five minutes. What do you think of this of this case? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Yes, we know it's a mystery. We (laughs) need some clues. (laughs) Yes, thank you. Thank you, Orphan. Uh, Very (laughs) insightful. (sighs) I think it had to do with these. With these? Oh my god, what what is that? I've never seen anything like that before. Neither have I. These strange white devices in the man's ears appear to be playing some sort of musical tune. (laughs) Oh my god. Wait, I've, I see it all now. He was up there on the fourth floor, and he had his AirPods in so he couldn't hear the man push him to the ground out the window! Watson, my dear! It's all elementary! <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's how the quote goes. Hmm, well, Dr. Watson, it does seem like this is quite a mystery. As the orphan has been saying, maybe we should have been listening to that orphan all along. Isn't that right, orphan? It's a mystery. Yes, it is a mystery. Because mm. this body right here, Dr. Watson, is dead. Uh, yeah, yes, that's quite <laughs> obvious. That bit was figured out quite early on. 
the rest of it is the mystery part. The dead bit was not part of the mystery. <laughs> He's quite dead. Although it is very strange. This man has no record of his existence. He, uh, it, it appears to have just appeared out of nowhere, thin air, wearing these strange uh, ear things, speaking about the future. The future. And it seems like they're wearing a dinosaur t-shirt. Have you had a look at this person's face, Dr. Watson? Absolutely not. I would never Whoa! touch a body. Uh, orphan, get oh off there. God. Orphan. Or- well, the, 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 the orphan has pulled the... I know that face. Oh my god, that is the face of my very good friend, but also podcast co-host, Zach Adams. He's been murdered. He's been murdered by Moriarty, probably. Well, in this universe, Moriarty does exist, so... Oh my god, and he's president. Who'd have thought... Whoa, yeah, yes, the current president of the, the, of, uh... of England. There's president in England now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe someone's murdered my podcast co-host. How am I going to record the episode this week? Hey. Zach? Hey, Sandro, how's it going? Wait, am I in the fictional character of Dr. Watson? You are, yeah, you're in the fictional character of Dr. Watson. I thought he didn't exist. No, he didn't. But um, through our time travel shenanigans, he somehow does live. Um, I'm just... I'm just putting a blanket over this body. Uh-huh. Uh, just don't mind me. I'm just putting a blanket over this body. Huh. That's right. Yes. The, those legs that I just saw before you covered them up look really familiar. That's so weird. Uh, don't, don't, don't worry about that. The orphan is on the case, aren't you, orphan? What do you think? What are your clues? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Yes, it is a mystery. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I could just look under the... No, don't the, do that. Don't do, oh, look, <laughs> okay. there's a Geraldine bird over there. Is that a real bird? I don't know. But look at the Geraldine bird. Often, is that a real bird? <laughs> yeah, it's a mystery. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Um, anyway, um, we got some podcasting to do, right? That's right, Zach. There's no time for you to inspect the body because it's time for us to inspect movies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we don't need to. We need to review them, not inspection. It's not like they're a. It's a mystery. Yeah, thanks, often. <laughs> well, well, well. This is the thing, though, Zach. Because usually on an episode we would review the movies, but this week we're doing a bonus battle, which <sighs> is nothing but objective truth, and everything we say is not opinion based; it's fact based. What? No opinions allowed. No opinions? It's not like I had any to begin with. Oh my god, <laughs> it's time for a b- 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 bonus mystery battle. B- 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 bonus mystery battle. Between Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie. Ooh. Zach, what the fuck is a bonus battle? I've forgotten, I've got amnesia. Oh, oh, that that is a bit of a mystery. How did you get this amnesia? I don't know, how did I get the amnesia, orphan? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Yes, it is a mystery. Yep, that's what I just said. Um, so, uh, in a bonus battle, we get two movies instead of the usual one, and we pit them against each other. We we chuck them into the ring. We fight them out. Or in, in this case, a, ba- a battle of wits. We fight them out. I think the movies fight it out. We don't fight the movies. No, 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 no. We we pilot them like mechas. Oh, right. It's a Pacific and, Rim and situation. Smash into <laughs> each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we come up with some arbitrary scores. Yes. And use those to make objective facts and come up with the some random reason why one movie is better than the other. Yeah, we got a bunch of categories, and then we pit the movies against each other. But what are the categories? We don't know. We make it up halfway through the episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll just figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But before we do that, we do need to uh, give our opinions on the movies. It's gonna, We'll probably follow the same format we did with Dracula Frankenstein. We'll do some reviews of the movies, and then we will do the thing. Do we want to just say spoilers? I mean, spoilers, yeah. I think people would be... Uh, especially for mysteries, I think mm. it's important for non-spoilers because obviously you can spoil the mystery. Well, maybe we do non-spoilers for these first opinions, yeah. And then when we get to the bonus battle, then we can start spoiling things. Which one do you want to talk about first? Which one? Which one do you want to? Um. Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, I want to. S- 
start with let's say Agatha Christie. Ooh, we'll start with that's my pick. The racist Agatha Christie movie. All right, yeah. let's uh, put some uh, time on the clock. And then there were none. Is a movie about murders. What? Oh my golly gosh. Sandro, this is meant to be a non-spoiler, you idiot. I know. You've already spoiled the whole movie. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah, I'll give a quick rundown of the premise. Uh, ten strangers are invited to an island. Yeah. And one by one, they are being murdered. <gasps> Spoilers. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's based off the Agatha Christie book, and then there were none, uh, which was originally published under the name Ten Little N Words, uh, and then that was changed Ooh, to the yikes to the uh, still very yikes Ten Little Indians, yikes, um, and then that was changed to Ten Little Soldiers, and then it's now and then there were none. <laughs> wow, that went through some iterations. It did, because, yeah, the murders may or may not have something to do with the classic song, the racist song. Mm. The one, the the song that's racist. Well, if you say soldiers, it doesn't sound so bad. I think soldiers work for that song a lot. Yes. But, yeah, it's like ten little soldiers doing something, and then it's like the the monkeys on the tree. Yes. Yeah. Or uh, jumping on the bed. Monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Yeah. Now there's nine little monkeys jumping on the bed. That sort of thing. Except with more racism and killing. <laughs> yes. Um, which which is uh which is a bit yikes. Big yikes. And uh kind of a, a bummer for the whole movie and or book as itself, because it's kind of integral to the plot. It is. It's like the main thing in the center of the plot. I knew this going into it, and I was like, this is still considered to be one of the best Agatha Christie mysteries. So I was like, yeah, yeah is that going to take away from it too much? Do you think it took away a lot from the movie? Having the song that they're constantly referring to being racist? <laughs> uh, no, because you could change the song to just make it, like, Soldiers works quite well. Yeah. Instead of having, you know... A song about murdering minorities, you could just have it about, like, soldiers or monkeys, whatever, you know? You could change that, and then the movie itself isn't that bad. But yeah, it is It is a bit of a bummer, but it's from a different time. Yeah, different. Uh, it's, it, was a diff- it was a different time. Yeah, I don't think it took away from the movie as much as it could have. And there are like, modern adaptations of this that just change it to soldiers, and that's fine. But it it does give the movie, like, it's very, the story and the events that occur, it's very clever, because it follows yes. the song to the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is, which is cool. I think that's cool. It's almost like a slasher movie at points, because you're like, mm. you know, it's all about how these people are being killed. And I'm like, fuck yeah! Uh, and yeah, I th- thought the movie was good. I wasn't expecting it to be as... I guess, funny as it was. Mmm, amusing. Yeah, it's not dry. And when I think of Agatha Christie books, as much as I like them, they're very dry reads. Yeah, I think the movie is good because you have these actors and they're very they're very well acted. Mm-hmm. The, the acting in this was very good because... Th- Everyone's sort of a caricature. Yes. And they're a bit they're a bit exaggerated, a bit ridiculous, and that's quite fun. It's quite good. Um a lot of great mysteries, a lot of great red herrings, uh all mm. the stuff and things there. It's set on an island mansion that was cool. It's good it's a good location. It's kind of hard to talk about this without any spoilers, actually. Yeah, yeah. You 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 were talking about doing non-spoilers and then getting into it. It's just like well, for mystery movies, the spoilers are kind of the thing. It's kind you know? of the whole it's, thing. It's yeah. like every every part of it. But you could you could point out individual characters and talk about them. Like I think the Doctor was well acted. I like yes. the Doctor actor. The Doctor was really good. I think they were all really good. Yeah, there isn't. Yeah. I mean, there's some. You know, obviously some characters get knocked off early, and they're like not as great as the rest of the cast. But that's just because there's not as much material for them to work with. Yeah, and I liked I liked the the sewing lady. I thought she was good. Like, there's some good there's some good characters. The story is pretty cool. But Sandra, did you figure out the mystery? Well, that's the thing with this movie compared to the Sherlock one is with Agatha Christie, you don't really like get clues 
until the end. Mm. And when this movie reaches its conclusion, it did do something that I was a bit like, oh, okay. Where obviously it's a mystery, and this isn't a spoiler because this happens in every mystery. Mm. The, the bad person, they reveal how they did certain things at the end of the movie. They're like, this is my plan. And the stuff that they mentioned in the ending was all stuff that happened in the final 20 minutes. So I don't think you really can figure this one out until you get to the final half hour. You can guess, though. You can, like, you can you can guess and go th- through which person you think. Mm. So did you think that the person who was the villain in the end was the villain in the end? I was a bit suspectful of them, but uh, no, I was kind of, sus- I was suspecting everyone. I was like, that person and that person and that person as so well. So you would have also been murdered. I probably would have been killed, yes. How about you? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't really figure it out. Obviously, as you said, we learn a few things, but it did all sort of click at the end and I was like, ah, it all makes sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'd, if I'd thought about it a bit more, it makes a bit more sense. And it kind of makes me want to go back and watch it again. Yeah. Or watch other versions of it, maybe. There's a bunch of other versions. Mm, There's one that was made in 2015 that I want to check out. They adapted it only a few years ago. Uh, Interesting. And it's three hours long. It's a mini series. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Give me all the content. (laughs) Oh, that sounds good. Because then you can really get into the nitty gritty of each character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yes, every character, the reason that they're here, every character may have done something in their past. Yes. They are accused of murder, yes, but have not gone to jail for it. They have not got any punishment. And there's a bunch of ones where you're like, that's a bit of a stretch. And then there's one character in particular where you're like, holy fucking shit. Yes. This guy needs to be locked up. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One guy said to murder, like, is it 21 Africans? Yeah, 21, like, tribesmen, I think it was. Tribesmen, yeah, that's what they say. And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's, it's like, one person's murdered one person. One, this guy's done a slaughter. Yeah. And it's just a little more racism thrown in. And it's like, oh, great. Fucking Christ. Well, that person is meant to be a bad guy, though. So I guess it's yes. fine-ish. But yeah. Yeah, the racism in this, I think, uh, it's definitely one of those movies that it's like, you've got to acknowledge it. It's there. It's front and center. It's uh, It takes up a good portion of the movie. But it's also easy to work around it. Like, if you yeah. took the book and just replaced every racist word with the word robot or soldier or toucan, <laughs> then it'd be fine. Yeah. I think. It's one of those those ones. It's not, uh, but yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I still really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a solid goodie. I reckon it's a good one. Yeah, I, I will also give it a goodie because I quite enjoyed it. And I think it also helps as well, like, the Agatha Christie movies that are popular. I mean, it's like the murder on the Orient Express, right? That's the big one. Everyone knows that one. Um, so it's kind of cool to have one that is just a mystery and not a praro or like miss maple sort of mystery yeah 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 that's it that's it all right now let's let's talk about uh sherlock holmes Mm, the woman in green although the movie's in black and white so yes you can't see that she's in green (laughs) so it doesn't make any sense actually (laughs) yeah yeah but i just thought that was funny me too uh this one Oh, there's murders. There's murders. <laughs> oh my Women goodness. are being murdered on the streets, and it's l- looking like Jack the Ripper. They're called the finger murders, because the murderer takes one of their fingers, and it's very funny to hear Sherlock go, I've got to stop the finger murders. And I'm like, haha, he said finger murders. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you implying, sir? What are you saying? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no. This was alright. <laughs> um, it felt like because this is what it is, it's jumping in to the last few episodes of Sherlock, right? This, is, yeah, so it was a film series, there were 13, 14 of them, and this is the 11th in this Sherlock yeah. series. So, like, there have been 10 more Sherlock movies before this, right? Yes. And I feel like a lot of the creative juices, mm. a lot of the the... Uh, interesting things have already been done and we're getting to like 
the C list stories, you know? Yeah. We've skipped B, we've gone to C. Yeah, I was going to try and watch, because the first one is The Hound of the Baskervilles. I was going to try and watch that before this one to get a bit more context, because I chose it. That's usually like what we do with sequels. I didn't get to. But mm. um, yeah, it does seem like uh, they did do all the big ones, all the big stories, and then when you get to these final ones, it's, like, mostly an original story, including elements of, like, this short story that doesn't have enough content for a full movie, so it's, like, based off a bunch Mm. of different short stories, but, like, with its own overarching plot, which, uh, I mean, I thought it was fun, but I completely agree. As soon as it started, I was like, who the fuck is anyone? Who's that person? Who's this person? Am I meant to know who that is? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is uh, an unfortunate thing for this movie that we kind of went in blind, and I think that was that was detrimental for the movie itself compared to Swan Song or whatever it was called. Yeah, um, I thought it should have been called Swan Song. By the way, that is a good name. Uh, for that it. would have been a much better name. But the the mystery itself. Was it terribly mysterious? I figured it out in the first 20 minutes. I knew what was going on, like, pretty much immediately. I was like, oh, that's what's happening. But I think it's less that the mystery is not very mysterious. It's more like... I mean, slight spoilers, but not really. This is a Moriarty movie. Mm. This is Sherlock versus Moriarty. So yes, it's like the mystery is there, and then it's more just him trying to outsmart Moriarty for the rest of the movie. Yeah, and I mean, I called the ending happening as soon as Moriarty showed up. Yeah. So that bit definitely wasn't mysterious, but yeah, like, it it was kind of obvious compared to the other movie where I didn't know what was happening till the very end where it sort of explained it and I went, oh, and everything clicked. Yeah. This movie didn't really have a click moment. This is like a, a just what's happening next sort of moment. I mean, Sherlock, though, is very different to Agatha Christie, because Sherlock is a lot, like, as a book series, it's a lot sillier. Yes. It's way more like, maybe magic, maybe giant demon dog. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but then it's revealed. It's a, it's a bit more like the Scooby Gang, you know, going around uh, being like, ah, it wasn't actually a demon dog. It was actually Mr. Smith. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Which is kind of what happens here is where we have like one person accused of murder, but then, of course, we find out they're not the murderer. Oh my God. And it's like, hmm, this is very strange. There's some sort of mystery here. And then Sherlock just co- sort of solves it. Yes. I don't know if there's a way we could figure it out from the clues other than the fact... I mean, it was just very obvious, you know what I mean? Like, storytelling-wise? Yeah. We'll get to the mystery itself later, but as soon as a certain person was introduced, and then... I don't know, yeah, it's like the way that everything's portrayed, you're almost a step ahead of Sherlock for half the movie because you've seen what happened. Yes. And then Sherlock instantly figures it out. And you're like, yeah, we, we, we already know. Thanks, Sherlock. Yeah, I guess maybe that's the problem is we sort of know what's going to happen before it happens. And we watch Sherlock figure it out rather than we figure it out with Sherlock. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I think that's the problem because that's what I enjoy about Sherlock as a character, is us figuring out with him. And it's like, you can figure it out before Sherlock, but, like, he will go through it and, like, explain details. He'll be like, this thing here, this means this. And you could go, oh, oh, and then this means this. And then he'll go and say, and then this means this. And you're like, oh, I'm a genius, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But this didn't quite happen with this movie. It felt like, yeah, we were ahead of Sherlock the whole time and we were just sort of watching Sherlock do the rounds and then finish it off. It wasn't a bad movie, though, I feel. It was all right. I really enjoyed it. It's not even... It's like an hour and ten minutes. It's so short. Yeah, yeah. It was like a short... It was like a TV episode. Yes. Right? It felt like I was watching an episode of Scooby-Doo, you know? And well, I they enjoyed released it. three of these in 1945, so I guess they kind of were TV shows, kind of, a little bit. Yeah, well, that's that's what the cinema was back in the day. It yeah. was sort of the TV show. Um, so, it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as well. I do want to talk about the guys, like, the two leads, like, Sherlock and uh, Watson. 
both seen before in previous m- movies. Oh, yes. Basil Rathbone is Sherlock Holmes. He was uh, the guy of Gisborne in Robin Hood. Oh! It was, it was bad guy in Robin Hood. Oh, yeah, he was. That's funny. Because he's a very villain in that one. But in this one, of course, he's Sherlock Holmes. I think he's good. I feel like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch may have ruined Sherlock because Whoa. Sherlock Whoa. after that, uh, it's kind of the same with like the Robert Downey Jr. one as well. Like Sherlock has become not a superhero, but a lot smarter than most people. Ooh, I'll defend the Robert Downey Jr. one. Oh, I'm not talking about the quality. I'm talking about the character. It's like himself. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because this version of Sherlock is just a guy. Yes. Whereas- with Sherlock now, he's become kind of like a superhero. He's so smart now. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the, that's the problem. Is like uh, with a lot of media nowadays, is they make their characters invincible, which makes them have zero stakes. Although I think the the Robbie Data Judah is a better one, but I think you're you're still right. There is a there's an element of invincibility which can lead to problems but the way around that is to have other characters be can they survive rather than show like the mystery not being is Sherlock gonna figure it out it's like is Sherlock gonna figure it out in time yeah you know what I mean which is kind of the case here because you've got like Watson as someone who could potentially be hurt we don't know we don't know maybe yeah yeah I did like uh, Watson's performance. He was quite entertaining. He was a bit more of a silly character in this, which was kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. So he's played by Nigel Bruce, who was the the Duke in Lassie. Mm. Uh, so it was, you know, it was good to see him again. He is. Yeah. It's a sillier version of Watson. Apparently, like, as the series went on, he got more sillier. That makes sense. I feel like people started making fun of him because he is, like, meant to be the average Joe. Yeah. And then Sherlock's like, shut up, you fucking idiot. <laughs> exactly. You fucking dullard. And he's like, oh, like, uh, he sort of figured it out. But yes, there was a bit more, like, comedic timing with uh, his things. Like, at one point, Sherlock is, like, explaining something, and he's, like, describing Watson. And Watson's like, wait a minute, that sounds like me. Wait, you're talking about me! Yeah, like, Sherlock does a little prank, a mm-hmm. little funny haha joke. Whereas a modern-day Sherlock would um, just, like, do meth, and then... <laughs> uh, that's, I think that is what the Sherlock in, was it Elementary? Yeah. The Elementary show? Yeah, he's, like, a yeah. drug addict or some shit? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, do meth, go into his mind palace, yeah. and then fuck off to have uh, a romantic fling with Moriarty um, <laughs> with heavy sexual tension before figuring it out as saving the day and getting the girl. And Moriarty is in this, and I love the performance. Mm. It was very camp. Like, the performance was very camp, which is, like, interesting, because in the books, Moriarty doesn't really read like that, but it's interesting to know that the character has always kind of been a bit, oh, hello, Sherlock, since, like, the start. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Since the movies from, like, the 40s, so it's great. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be Moriarty without him being just a little bit camp. Exactly. But, yeah, the mystery here is, uh, not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the mystery's kind of meh. Especially compared to the other movie I just watched, where I went, whoa, you know, things click. This is cool. It was like this one. It's like, eh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a fine movie. You know, the entire series helped get Sherlock a bit more popular. I mean, after this, you've got Peter Cushing takes over the role. Christopher Lee, Michael Caine, mm. uh, Christopher Plummer, most recently Henry Cavill uh, <laughs> as, as Sherlock in the in the Enola Holmes. Henry Cavill. Cavill. Uh. Maybe there'll be a third Robert Downey Jr. one at some point. Who knows? That's been in the works for I, fucking I hope so. years. I, I, I doubt that Robbie Daddy Jr. ever you know, needs to do any film ever again. It's true. But I hope he does. Um, appa- apparently, Elementary was good. I saw the first season. I was like, eh. Sherlock uh, was good, and then it wasn't. <laughs> so. Yeah, it had, it had like a big thing where everyone was doing Sherlock for a while, and then everyone got sick of Sherlock. Because yep. it was like, we've got too many. What was that comedy one uh, that was really fucking terrible? 
it, yeah, uh, was it Holmes and Watson, maybe? Yeah, Holmes and Watsons or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Did I watch all of it? I think I watched all of it. Oh, and it God. Was really fucking bad. Yeah. Anyway. I'm, uh, I, I'd am give this a goodie, though. I, I, I think it's good. Uh, I'd give this a goodie only because we can't give, like, a medium rating. Yep. But this is a very meh movie. Yep. But it wasn't bad. I feel like, again, it would have been better if we had watched the previous ones. Yeah. And this was a sort of continuation. Because there's a bit of reveals and stuff in it. Which is like, that means nothing to me. Yay! Yeah, no, definitely the first few, I think, are really good. Like, the first three all seem to be quite good. The The third one is Sherlock against the Nazis, which I want to see. I, I, I want to yeah. see that. <laughs> that sounds pretty good, though. That sounds pog. Well, won't someone tell me who let the dogs out? Hi, my name is Selly McSeller, and this is an ad. Why, over on Patreon.com forward slash Oldie Buddy Goody Pod, Sandro and Zach are doing some absolute ridiculous stuff right now. They're doing they're doing Nicolas Cage movies again. They did it last year, they're doing it again, and the second episode is up right now. It's on a movie called Redfield. Nicolas Cage isn't even the main character, but anyway, he's a clip from the episode. But I thought it was being a bit silly with it, you know? There's, like, the one cop that's clearly corrupt, and the other cop, which is, like, they were all stereotype cops. Yeah, it was a fun comedy. I don't know, it's like, yes, they're all stereotype one-dimensional, but then they try to have earnest moments, and I'm like, you haven't earned this. Well, like, who, who was trying to earn it that did? Aquafina and her sister. Everything there, I was like, I don't care. I don't care about your history. I don't care about your family. I just want some dumb action. Mm. Stop trying to make me care about this character. That is that is an interesting point. Because, yeah, I definitely think it was a, a weaker thing. But it was a motivation for the characters. I don't think you need a motivation. Like, she's a cop. Just have... That's the motivation you need. Yeah, well, yeah, but it, it added more stakes to the movie. ha. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Wow, that sounds like there is comedy and there is also a bit of an arguing about opinions. That's what I want to hear by heading over to patreon.com forward slash oldie but a goodie pod, getting ad free episodes and bonus content like the Cage Arama number two. Go, go check it out. Yeehaw! Uh, there we go. Two goodies for both movies. But often, which one is, in terms of facts, better? It's a mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery. Yeah. It I is. mean, you, he's not wrong. It is a mystery. Because we haven't got into it yet. Right. Well, we've had we said our opinions. It's time to put them aside. It's time to do a bonus battle. Zach, we got to come up with some categories. Or do we just come up with categories as we're going through it? That's kind of funny. Yeah, that is kind of fun. We could come up with a few few ones, and yeah. then if we think of more, we can uh, we can add them on as we're going. So obviously, we've got the mystery. Thanks, orphan. Thanks, orphan. <laughs> uh, yes, the mystery category. Mystery category. We should probably have predictability category, or is that the same as mystery? I think that's goes into mystery. That's the whole like mystery, how predictable it was, that sort of thing. Well, both movies had murders. Murders. So we could do the murders. Which murders were the best murders? <laughs> how does where? How do you rate a murder? What's what's the thing for that mm. one? Creativity. Creativity. Oh, Brutality. Okay. All right. Yeah. I feel like I feel like one movie has just a huge advantage in that category because it has you know different types in it, whereas the other one has one type. No, this this this. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll get to it when we get to the category. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, sure, you can have that category. I wanted um, atmosphere. That was one I. That's a good one. Or acting. I think acting is also a good one. Uh, and and if we're going to go for five, as we usually do, one last one um, can be uh, racism. <laughs> no. Um- <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I know which movie wins that category. Mm, um, we'll come up with something. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. For now, it will be a mystery.
Thanks, Holden. Oh my goodness. Yes, the first category is... Mystery. Oh, you stole the words right out of my Whoa. mouth. Oh my goodness. All right. Now, the orphan's getting a lot of audio in this episode. The orphan really is. Yeah, he's a star character. The first category is mystery. We're going to, get to, 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 to talk about it and then rate each movie out of five for, for yeah, mystery. Yeah, so spoilers. Spoilers for the bonus spoilers. battle. We're doing the bonus battle now. There'll be spoilers in it because we're going to talk about the mystery, yes. which are the entire plots of the movie. Oh, my goodness. The mystery of the woman in green, Zach. Mmm, the woman in green. People are being hypnotized to murder people, cut their fingers so they can get blackmailed by Moriarty so he can get lots of money. Yeah, so <laughs> here's my journey with this. Yeah? We see there's the murder and they're like, the finger murders. And I was like, ha 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 Hilarious. <laughs> ah, I definitely murder with my finger, eh? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, and then... <laughs> And then, and then we see a woman talking to a guy and she gives him a drink. And I was like, oh, she's drugging him mm. to go do murders. Because then he wakes up in a room and it's like, what happened? And I'm like, she drugged him to do murders. And then like Moriarty's there and he's like, you did murders. Give me money, bitch. And I was like, oh. So the mystery of this movie is uh, uh, not non-existent. <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah. very easy to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I still had that whole sort of thing. I'm like, how how did they get him to murder? Yeah. You know, like, I was like, okay, this guy murdered someone. How did they get him? And then it's revealed they used hypnosis. And I was like, oh, right, hypnosis. And then the rest of the movie sort of played itself out for me. But for a while, I was like, how did they get this person to murder some? I was wondering if they, like drugged them, mm. went, murdered someone, and then put the finger, like, they took them, this drugged unconscious person, took them with them, murdered someone, gave them the finger, and then put them back, and then blackmailed them. That's what I was thinking as well for the start. Which would be a more realistic way to do this than hypnosis. <laughs> yeah, the hypnosis thing- well, was it hypnosis? Technically, it was, right? They go to a hypnosis, like, convention. Yeah. Where Dr- Dr. Watson gets hypnotized, right? Yeah, and it's like she gives the men cannabis to open their minds so that they can do murders. Well, the man, fuck yeah. <laughs> this is very funny. Um, it's, it's very Sherlock. It's very silly, borderline supernatural, but not really kind of based on science, but like silly science. Pseudoscience. Pseudoscience. Yeah, pseudoscience. It's very Sherlock, which, you know. It, it was it was fun, but yeah, it wasn't too much of a mystery, because once it was revealed there was hypnosis, it was like obvious what was happening. Yeah. And so that there wasn't really a mystery so much. You're just watching Sherlock, you know, do his thing to fight... Moriarty. I mean, the end was a nice little twist. It was obvious. I knew it was going to happen. I called the ending as soon as hypnosis was revealed, is they would try and hi hypnotize Sherlock. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he would not get hypnotized. He would somehow outsmart them. Yeah. And it was a, it was an interesting little thing where he was like, oh yeah, I drugged myself. Oh, I drugged myself. Yeah, I, I liked the ending as well. I want to watch the other Moriarty movies from this series because apparently Moriarty was dead before this movie. Yes, yeah. Well, that like that's uh, implied in the movie, but obviously we didn't get to see that, and that's one of the the bigger reveals from this movie, which would make this movie maybe have a bit more impact in cinema at the time. Was oh hey Moriarty's back, and there's that sort of big reveal. But also Moriarty always dies. Yeah, he always well, fakes it. his death and comes back. That's the whole thing. But at the end of this movie, so he's hypnotized Sherlock and is trying to get him to walk off the top of a building down to his death. Obviously, uh, during this sequence, Moriarty is monologuing. He admits to everything and the cops are hiding around the corner. So they come in and then and they arrest him now that they've got the confession or, or, or some shit. And then Moriarty's like, you can't catch me. And he runs away and he tries to jump to another building and then he falls to his death and he never appears in any of these movies ever again. So I, li I like that that's how he dies. What? 
canonically. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was just going to be like, oh yeah, it looked like he died, but then thing. Which is obviously what they planned for. Yes. For this. But then they just decided never to bring it back, which means this is the canonical death of that character. This is how Moriarty dies, which is he very just funny. slips and dies. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very funny. But also very dumb. But yeah, I I think on a mystery scale out of five, I'm going to give this one a 2.5. I'm going to give it a two. Ooh. All right. Like, I liked the movie, but the mystery was not the reason I liked it. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't very mysterious. Unlike. And then there were swan song racism. <laughs> Unlike racist movie, which was very mysterious. Oh, yeah. Like, straight from the get-go, you've got this young guy who's got luggage that doesn't have his name on it. It doesn't have his initials. And I was like, what the... Oh, that's the bad guy. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Everyone is pretty sussy barkers right here. It's true, Everyone's it's true. a bit sus. There's an imposter among us, Sandro. Oh my god, there's an imposter among us. And you know what? It's sus on the butler. Oh, absolutely. That's the thing. Everyone's sort of equally suspicious in this movie. And everybody does things. And you're wondering the whole- Like, anyone could have been Mm. the murderer. Yeah, it's like one of those shows that you'd go and see, like, a stage show version of it. And who the murderer is changes every night. It's one of those shows, like, it could easily be anyone who is alive in the last, like, half hour. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, man. I want to go to one of those mystery things. Yeah. Figure out who the murderer is. That sounds fun. Anyone could have been the murderer- There's so many red herrings, it's great. Every time you're like, it's that guy, they die, obviously, classic. Yeah. And also the fact that all all the murders are following the nursery rhyme, you're, like, waiting to see, because there's, like, a part in the song where it's something about a bumblebee kills one of them, and you're like, how the fuck is a bumblebee going to kill someone? And then I instantly thought about the Doctor Who episode with Agatha Christie with a giant bumblebee, and I was like, are they going to do that? (laughs) (laughs) But no. No, no, they, um... That it, like one guy, uh, the lady gets drugged by a needle, like she gets injected with poison, and then a bumblebee is let into the room. So at first you're like, wait, did the bumblebee kill her? Mm. And it's like, no, it was actually a needle, but it still follows the story, sort of, which is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good mystery, and yeah, like even up to the end, you're still kind of guessing. Yeah. You try to figure out who it is, and of course, you don't suspect the revealed murderer, which is the judge. Mm. Because earlier in the movie, he gets shot and killed. Well, as soon as he was shot, though, I was like, that's kind of a dodgy effect on his head. Yeah, there was something sus. Because, like, with the gun itself, I was like, a gun at that time, it would have been a lot messier. But also, this movie is, you know, it, it's a family movie. It's, you know, it's, it's for families, so maybe that's why... But I was like, mm. oh, and also, yeah, effe- effects and like understandings of effects have grown a grown a long way since then. So no, definitely. it could have just been like that's the effect they went for for the for the movie gun. And I mean, movies have done unrealistic bullet holes before, you know. But I was just like, oh, huh, that's that's weird. I thought that was weird, but my suspicions then went to the doctor, right? Yes, because I thought the doctor had shot him. And I was, the reason it was sus, I was like, oh, it's the Doctor. So for the rest of the movie, I suspected the Doctor until he was dead. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, shit, I'm an idiot. Yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. And then it's like the two characters who are left are like the ones that you kind of like as well. The young guy and yes. the young woman. And you're like, oh, but they're the ones I like. Oh, I didn't like the young guy because of the racist slaughter. But turns out he wasn't the racist slaughterer. No, no, he no. wasn't. He was he was some different guy, which is very interesting. Because the racist slaughterer killed himself when he got the invitation, so he went along instead. Uh, in his in his in his in, yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I like uh, I like the conclusion as well that the the young guy sort of figures it out. Yeah. So he gets the shot, and then, yeah, the uh, then the evil villain sort of reveals himself. He poisons himself. Yeah, because she's like, because um, like in the song, uh, a bit yikes, knowing the history of the lullaby, but the final person dies from being hung. And you're like, well, how is that going to happen when 
there's only one person left on the island after, you know, this guy kills himself. It's because she, it's it's her, she's the final girl. It's like, uh, yep. she's going to be hung by the law. Yes. And yes. I was like, oh my God, that's pretty, that's, that's this guy. It's pretty clever. It's pretty it's good. It's pretty clever. It's, it's I well mean, done. in the end, he, he doesn't quite succeed because obviously the, the second last guy didn't die. Yeah. And that's sort of revealed and he's like, oh, yes. It's it's gonna they're gonna lock you up because you're the only one left here and no one's gonna believe you. You just murdered nine people, but then of course it's revealed that the other guy's there and it's like ah and there you go and he's like ah never trust a woman. <laughs> yeah, it's his final words, <laughs> which was very silly. But yeah, I do I do like the reason he was doing it as well. It's like he was a judge, but uh, too many murderers. Went out under his under his under his watchful eye. Yes. He wasn't able to put away as many murderers as he would have liked, so he took them all to an island and made them <laughs> and, and, and killed them all himself. Uh, good good mystery, good mystery. I like I like the mystery. I'm gonna give this mystery uh, either a I think a four point five. I'm thinking four point five as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna say four point five because. It is a great mystery, but you can't really pick up too much on who it is yeah. until the year ends. Yeah, there's some like key pieces of information that really put it together. Mm. But you could you could have kind of figured it out. Like I think you, you could have got the motivation, I think. Yeah. I-, I think as well, that's the thing with Agatha Christie movies as well, is like with the books you're given way more information about the characters from the get-go. Yeah. In the movies, that's kind of boring, right? So <laughs> they don't do that. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's right. It, it probably would have been better in the books because they could have told you more about each of the characters and yeah. you could have actually figured out the motivation from the judge because that that kind of makes sense that a judge would want these guilty people to be punished, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually makes sense, but it's not, like... It's not something you really know till the very end. And I think exploring people's motivation as to why they would want to kill everyone would have been another, like, thing on top of all this mystery that would have helped, like, click all the puzzle pieces together. But it was a nice, oh, that that feeling at the end when everything clicked together, I was like, oh, that's, ooh, this was good. It's good. a good mystery. It's really good. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's... This is a very good movie, so I'm, yeah, uh, 4.5 for me. How about you? 4.5. 4.5. I'm trying to see, like, what else the the actors in this movie were in. It seems like a lot of them, yeah, were just kind of around doing small bits here and there. They're all really good. They're all very good. I like the butler. The butler is so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, he's he was great. I liked where, because they start, like, accusing him, and he's like, well, I'm just going to get drunk. Fuck all you guys. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what the fuck? My wife got fucking murdered, and all you guys do is just accuse me of killing her. You assholes. Yep. So he just starts drinking heavily. I wonder how future adaptations of this change things as well. Because I know that, like, yeah. I, I, I think it's... Maybe the recent murder on the Orient Express, that changed who the killer was, I think, mm. from the book. I I might be wrong, but anyway. Oh, yeah, changing the murderer to make it different is cool. I like that. Next category is atmosphere! Yeah, I was just going to bring up, before we get into atmosphere, wasn't there, like, a movie that came out that had, like, different versions of it? Oh, Clue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I need to see that. I need to see that. I've never seen it. Clue is great. It's very silly. Yeah. It's more of a comedy, but yeah. Well, Clue the board game is very silly. Yeah. I kind of want to watch that now to like, yeah, watch watch one version of it and have that and then watch a different version where it's different, like just, just compare them. Yeah. But that idea that people went and saw it and went, oh, this was the murder. And then someone else says, no, this was the murder. And they go, what? You fucking idiot. No, yeah. it was this. You know, that that would be hilarious. It's great. Yeah. That's a very, very fun movie. I do recommend it. Anyway, atmosphere. Atmosphere. Fair Orphan, which is which movie's got the best atmosphere? It's a mystery. I mean, it's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess. Woman in Green. Atmosphere. That's all right. That's good. Yes. 
a little peek behind the curtain as to why I picked the woman in green out of all the Sherlock movies. Yes, because it's got Moriarty, but I also messaged Rob Lloyd because he's a big fan of Sherlock. And I was like, yeah. which of these three Sherlock movies is great? And he was like, this one. It's a bit like, a, it's kind of like a film noir. It's got a really good, you know, noir atmosphere. And I, get, I guess it it does. Mm. It does all the noir stuff. It opens with like a monologue of like, and that was the night of the, the murders, and I had to go to see Sherlock. Yeah, yeah. And that was cool. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the start where they just go for drinks, and then Sherlock like notices this the woman, and then that's like revealed later on to be important. Like, I think the atmosphere was pretty good in this movie. It is good. You're right. I I enjoyed it. I liked the sequence as well, which is based off an entirely separate short story, but the sequence with the window, Ooh. where there's a sniper across the street. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, shit. And the sniper shoots Sherlock, and you're like, what the fuck? And then it's revealed, of course, Sherlock wouldn't get shot. No. And then he's like... I used the bust of Julius Caesar, because, you know, all prominent people have a good nose like mine. <laughs> yeah, that was very funny. I was like, is that nosist? Is fucking Sherlock being nosist right now? There was that, like, air of, like, comedy behind all that as well. Like, yeah. the nose thing, like, all of Watson's, like, being like, oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, it's like, Watson is being silly- but it's not, like, straight comedy. It's not only for laughs, which is good. No. It's just, like, that's his character. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, good. when he's leaving for a job, he, like, mutters about some of his old work. And it's like, oh, yes, I remember the last time I went out to be a doctor. Oh, yes, I helped birth a child. That child was ugly as shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yes. <laughs> or there was something like, uh, uh, I've got the quote written down here somewhere, uh, yeah, no, he was like, and uh, there should be a law against fat people owning dicky birds. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is the context behind that, Watson? What are you talking about? Yeah, because cause, um, cause the lady he's going to patch up, she fell off a stool or something, having to reach up to feed the bird or something like that. Yeah, which is so funny. I was like, what the what? Yeah. What are you talking about, Watson? What are you talking about? But the atmosphere was good. I think the atmosphere could have been better if it was a bit more of like a... Because they say that the finger murders are kind of like a Jack the Ripper sort of situation. It could have been more fun if it was a Jack the Ripper movie. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think the mystery being less mysterious was definitely a, a little bit of a... It, it sort of downed the atmosphere a little bit. A little bit. But, like, uh, Sherlock, his his atmosphere was quite good. I liked I liked his acting, and he, he felt very Sherlock-y. Especially the end. The ending was quite good for this movie. So, uh, uh, I'll say it's good. I'll, I'll give this, like, a 3.5? 3.5? I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it a 3. No, I'll give it a 4. A 4? All right. Yeah. Uh, and then there were none, though. More like, and then there was atmosphere. Whoa! Whoa. I love movies that are set on an island and there's no way off the island. I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Yes. This, this was very, like, tense. Oh, yeah. It felt tense. Yeah. Because everyone suspects everyone of being the murderer, right? So there's this sort of, like, tense atmosphere. It doesn't happen at first. It, at first, there's, like, a bewildered atmosphere, and then it, when people start dying, it becomes a very tense atmosphere, and it's like, what the shit is going on? Enhanced by the good mystery. So I think the atmosphere was very good here. I think it was really good, especially, yeah, like, when you get down to the last few people, and no one wants to be with one other person. Everyone wants yeah. to be in, like, a group of three. But you've got... Five people. Yes. So there's got to be two people off on their own. Yes. You know, that was all great. That was so, so much fun. All the stuff on the spooky beach. I was like, fuck yeah, spooky beach. Yeah. What, what, oh, what's with the seaweed? Why is the seaweed everywhere? What's going on? What's going on? Um, the house is really cool. I love old Victorian houses like that, where it's just like yeah. long corridors and rooms and stuff reminded me of amnesia kind of it's like that sort of yeah it's got a, sort of it's got a very spooky atmosphere as well the the along with this mystery you're wondering if there is some sort of supernatural thing going on mm, you are is there a giant killer bee like in the doctor who episode with agatha christie <laughs> no no that's the that was the last thing i was wondering 
Oh dear. I I I I, I it's good. Um, go. Um, I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. Mm. I will also give it a four. I will also give it a four. Well, we've been talking about it a little bit, but acting for woman in green. The acting, I think, was pretty good. They acted. Yeah. Can't deny them that. Uh, Sherlock's pretty great acting. He's good. Watson, pretty great acting. He's good. Moriarty, they're very fun. Moriarty was pretty good acting. Yeah, yeah, I liked Moriarty. Rest of the characters? Eh. Yeah. You've got, like, the Inspector, Inspector Lestrade and Inspector Gregson are there and they're doing things. Oh, yeah. But they, they weren't really in this film so much. I feel like if you'd seen the earlier works, you would know these characters and know who they were. And they're, like, almost cameos in this film. Yeah. The acting wasn't bad, though. I think, like, the lady was good. The evil hypnotist. She was good. I liked the scene where she's sitting down with Sherlock in the bar where he saw her. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I saw the person who 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 was murdered i saw that person uh, but i only saw the back of her hair and she's like eh, you fucking idiot. that was me you fool <laughs> yeah so that was quite good i liked how she's um it's just a good performance it's not like sinister but she's definitely a, a bit sus the entire time and yeah it's good it's good yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think that this is by any means my favorite version of Sherlock, though. This is yeah, that's the yeah. that's the thing. I feel like there's better versions of Sherlock, so I'm I'm gonna give this one like a three, a three. I'm gonna go three point five. Okay, okay. But and then there were none. Ah, and then there were none. And this is where the acting's great, mm. like because. You only have eight characters, but all eight of them are, like, main characters. Yeah. Well, technically, there's ten, but two of them die pretty much immediately. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess it, it's true. I, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. But, like, all, all... Sorry, yeah. All ten of the characters are very well acted. Yes. I really liked, like, the young guy. He's incredibly sus, and you're like, what yeah, is this young yeah. kid? Yeah, he's just kind of, he's kind of swaggy. Mm. And you're like, why is this guy so nonchalant when everyone's getting murdered? That's sus. Yeah. And then you've got, like, the doctor with all his medical knowledge and his scalpels and his things. You're like, oh, that's a bit sus. Mm, that's a bit sus. And then you got... The the lady who doesn't want to talk about anything. She doesn't Ooh. want to talk about a backstory. She doesn't want to talk about anything. That's pretty it's sus. Pretty sus. All she wants to do is do some knitting. And you're like, what are you knitting for? That's pretty sus. That's pretty and then sus. we got the butler. Oh my god, that fucking butler. So sus. The butler. He's just drinking and complaining. And his wife is dead. Also, his wife was kind of hysterical. She wasn't sus, actually. <laughs> she she was just hysterical. She wasn't. I loved it. How they were like, well, she died because she was hysterical. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're still in the 40s. That's right. We're still doing the 40s. The the weird guest guy, the, like, famous dude who, like, plays the piano. He sings the song at the start, yeah? yeah yes, yes. He, and, and, like, he's constantly making toasts. I like his role in the movie because he's just this really wacky dude who dies. Because he dies pretty early on, he gets a lot of screen time at the start, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's just like, a toast to this, a toast to that. Ah, you, you lot are all idiots for coming here without knowing the person. I'm not an idiot, though. I'm a professional guest. <laughs> I'm a professional guest. It is very silly. Uh, very well acting. Oh, the stuff, because the butler goes to sleep in the shed, and they all want to give him a key for a room to, like, lock it so, like, no one can get in there. They're like, butler, you've got to open the door. And he's like, no, why? I'm drunk and unhappy. And they're like, we've got to give you a key. And he's like, shove it uh, under the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, he's going to tell them to shove it up their ass. Oh, no, he's he's saying to shove the key under the door. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's funny. That's funny. Very funny. Yeah, I think the butler was definitely one of the best actors of that film. The butler and the judge. Like, the judge yeah, is just- Yeah, the judge, the is, judge really is good. The judge is so good. Yeah. Um, I, 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 liked, I liked them all. And even, like, the character who only shows up at the end to look at the dead bodies. The guy, the ferryman. Even he's got, like, so much personality. He's in this movie for, like, 30 seconds. Yeah, he's got, like, 15 seconds at the start and 15 seconds at the end. But he's, like, this jolly sailor dude. Like, this old salt, you know? Yeah, Who yeah. doesn't give a shit. 
He's just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take you across the water. Why not? Oh, it's a rocky day. I'm, I'm going to eat a sandwich. Yeah, he's great. Um, I'm going to go for a solid 9.5. Uh, 9. Uh, Whoa! Out of five. Uh, I'm going to go for a 4.5. I think the acting is... Five out of five for oh me. Oh, my God, he five did it. Five out of five. Boom. So what mountain were the stones in the walls of this specific monastery mined from exactly? Wait, can my character take a dump? What's the governmental structure of every town in this entire Which continent? magic using class is, like, the most attractive? How these people know how to make tunnels under their town when all they do is farm Why does the genie always refuse to make people fall in love with me? Like, if who hurt Poison me? rules are the same for every player race. Does that mean they all have can the same digestive system? Can my character have a pet? System? Ooh, can that pet have a pet pet? Are your players asking too many questions? Do you really know how your world works? Don't you wish there was a podcast that made this whole thing easier? Come on over to Dungeon Deep Dive, your favourite fantasy world-building podcast. Whether it's tabletop RPGs or creative writing, we do the research so you don't have to. Find us on your podcatcher of choice or on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram on at Dungeon Deep Dive. And the next category is the murders! Oh, the murders! Murder, murder, murder. Yeah. So we have one movie with, like, one type of murder that happens in it, and yes. one movie where every individual gets murdered in a different way. Well, yes, so in Sherlock, uh, there's the finger murders, and I think it gets a bonus point from me, because Sherlock throughout the movie is like, I've got to get that finger murderer. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like, this is so funny. Yeah, it's yeah. very funny. It has aged slightly Slightly poor, poorly in that regard, but also because of it, it's kind of funny, though. It is kind of funny. Um, yeah, I, I would say, like, the murders are also, like, the hypnotizing thing is pretty good. And then also that final scene where Moriarty just yeets himself off a of building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, if you're counting, like, that as a murder, then yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, of course, they try and murder Sherlock with a bit of hypnotism. That was cool. That was good. That was good. There's a point where a guy gets a needle shoved through his hand, and I was like, that's a pretty good effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, you know what? This, this is a pretty good murder. There's an almost murder of um, Watson, where he almost gets stabbed by that street vendor. That was pretty good. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, we just... It's off-screen, like, hypnosis murder things, which is pretty good. It's good. It's pretty good. The idea is good, but you don't see anyone getting murdered. So it gets a 2.5 from me. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a 3. Okay. I'll give it a 3. Oh, you know, I like the finger murder th things. It could have been better, though. Mm. You know? The murders in, and then there were no... Well, we don't really see a lot of the murders... No, we don't see them either. This isn't, like... This isn't your slasher films. No. This isn't, you know... Uh, this is blood, guts, and gore. We just see the, 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 like, aftermath of what happened, which is kind of the whole point with the mystery, right? No one knows when people get murdered till they find them already dead. Well, we do see... Is it the doctor? No, the old guy. Uh, he gets a, a thing pushed on top of him, and, like, he, it's like... Oh, uh, no, that was the detective. The detective. We do see him get murdered, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see, like... Him standing there, and then the uh, bricks, like, he's like, oh, I figured it out. And then, like, all the bricks, like, land on him. And you don't see him get crushed by the bricks, but you see next to him where the brick, like, bricks appear on the screen. And it's like, oh, he got crushed by the bricks. Yeah, that was the more... We we actually see, like, movement in the curtains of someone pushing it. So that's that's a moment where we actually see a murder happen. Yes. But for the rest of the movie, they all happen off screen. I, I, I was a bit sad. How does he manage to murder everyone without anyone noticing? That is an extraordinary feat. Like, I'm picturing there's hidden doors everywhere. Every room is connected. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that could be a way. Absolutely. But that's never explained in the movie, Sandra. He, he is smart, though. Yes. He is wily. It's just interesting that, like, eight people get murdered. And not a single one of them, like, a single other person gets to witness him murdering anyone else. I did like as well, whenever he does murder someone in the kitchen, uh, no, 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 in the dining hall, we've got uh, ten Native American statues in the middle of the table. And, like, as everyone is murdered, one of them is broken. It is, it is, uh, like, good. You have this, like, o ominous statues in the middle for this song, and then, yeah, as, as like, 
each person gets murdered, the murderer secretly goes and breaks one of the statues each time, which is quite funny. It's good. I was it's like, good. oh, that's that's good. Yeah, 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 that was good. I think this works better, though, in the story, because it's a longer time in the story, a longer time frame. Yeah, they're there for f- three, four days, I think. Yeah, like... Like in the movie, it all like there's one death after another, but you could have some pauses in between yes. in the book, which means like the murderer has to wait till there's an opportune moment to then, you know, murder someone. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, the TV show version being like three hours would probably help with that as well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You you have a bit of a longer period where it makes more sense that the murderer finds the exact times to murder people without anyone noticing. But yeah, I like that. I do like as well how the movie, I mean, the book even, was kind of a writing exercise for Agatha Christie to follow the nursery rhyme exactly as like how all of them die to then make it the same here in the movie. I think that makes it really fun. Particularly the the beehive bit. Yeah, That was quite clever where it's like, like, you can tell the murderers trying to make it like the nursery rhyme, but obviously can't quite do it with the bee sort of thing, which is quite good. Sounds good, it's good. I think it gets a solid uh, 4.5 from me. Ooh, that's quite high. I'm going to give it a 4. I'm going to give it a 4. Okay. Just just because how does how does this judge get away with this shit with no one else noticing? It's true. He's also not the most intimidating of men. Oh, I, I disagree. Because he's... He's the opposite of the, like, big scary dude. He's the silent, like, smart one that I would rather the the big the big scary one because I know he is the murderer where it was like the smart one's going to outsmart me. That's true. That's true. I could I could shoot the big man, but I but the the, the little man can outsmart the bullet. One final category, I guess, to round this out. Mm. Mm, I can't really think of any. We could do comedy. We could do comedy, or we could do potential for a sequel. No, yeah, no, we'll do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like comedic comedy, because there is a bit of a haha funny aspect to each of these movies. There is. They're not as dry as I was expecting them to be. The Sherlock one, Sherlock is dry, and then Watson's there to be like, oh my god. Oh. I'm a goofball. I'm a bit yeah, of a goofball. Yeah, he's a goofball. And it's a bit silly with the whole hypnosis thing. Yep. Just as a silly thing. Uh, the finger murders. You gotta finger some murderers. You Very know? funny. As that was probably not intentional, but I did laugh every time that they said that they were a finger murders. And it's a sort of goofy movie where you learn sort of things. Where, like, Sherlock kind of mocks Watson. He's like, oh, yes. I, I saw a doctor fellow being followed. And he's like, a doctor? And he's like, yes, his name was Watson. And he's you, you fucking idiot. And he's like, Watson, and he's me. Well, that's me! That's me, yeah. my golly gosh. I, I Yeah. There's a part as well where they where he's like, elementary, my dear fellow. And I was like, fuck yeah, he said it. He said the thing. He said the line. He said the, he line. Said the line. So it was good, it was good. So I think the comedy... Uh, that one, pretty good. I'm going to rate it uh, 3.5. 3.5. I'm going to go 4. It gets a bonus point from me purely because uh, you've got Moriarty being camp. I think that's really funny. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Actually, I might rate it a 4 because uh, Watson shames fat people. <laughs> oh. Why the fuck does he do that? Um, 4 and then there were none. It starts off with comedy. It starts off with them all in the boat going to the island and th- and they're all like annoying each other like, "Oh no, her scarf's blowing on his face, but but his tobacco smoke is blowing on that guy." Yeah, and there's <laughs> still a bit of comedy through the first bit of the movie where they've got that like you've got like this weird guest person who's always making toasts, they sing a silly song. But then the atmosphere starts to change as people go murder. Yeah. And then the butler starts drinking, and that's hilarious. That's so much fun. The butler is hilarious. But then once the butler dies, there's not really any comedy left. No. No. I mean, I think the doctor. The doctor, is yeah. pretty funny. The doctor. I did laugh at when the detective was like, I figured it out, and then gets murdered. That was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that was, yeah. That was comedic timing, as it were. Do you think the detective figured it out at the end? No. Hmm? I don't think he did. <laughs> I, 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 I hope he did. My hope is that he did, and they got murdered, and, like, he died knowing what happened. 
Oh, and um, when when everybody's peeping on each other. Yes. When one guy's, like, staring through a keyhole at another guy, and that guy staring through the keyhole is being watched in the doorway oh, yeah, by yeah, another yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. And then that guy who's being peeped on through the keyhole is watching a guy out in the hallway, and the guy out in the hallway is looking at the guy standing in the doorway. <laughs> like, they all do this, like, four-way watching all of each other, being suspicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they all get into the same room together. Ah, that was funny. That was really good as well. No, you're right. I think, yeah, it's still pretty funny. I'm gonna give it 3.5 for me, I think. 3.5, a little bit less than Sherlock, but also, yeah, yeah, 3.5 for me. Yeah, I'm tossing up between 3 and 3.5. I think this was uh, funny. I'll, th- I'll give it a 3.5. 3.5 as well. All right, well, I've got to add up all the points and see which one was objectively the winner while you fill for time, or I just cut it. I could just cut the gap. Ah, uh, don't, don't worry about this, Sandro, because the orphan has been calculating it the whole time. Oh. Hey, orphan, what's the final score? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Oh, you bastard. You piece of shit. Fucking dumb orphan. God damn it. You won't even tell us this. Well, I guess you will have to calculate it up. In the meantime, I'm going to have a look at this body on the floor here that we've just been ignoring this whole time. You know, the one you put a sheet over? We're doing the story during the episode? This is ridiculous. Yeah, What's well, going on? It needs to be right here. He hasn't moved. It's That's not true. like he's going anywhere. They're dead. I was just going to have a look at it. While we're going to have a look at it? Huh. Uh, you're lifting up the top. Oh, and I've got the, oh, I've, oh. I've got the winner right here. I've got the winner right here. Don't look at that body. Okay, well, I'll, I'll have a look at it later then. Uh, what's, what's the final tally? What's the final score? Out of a possible 50 points on 31.5, it is the woman in green. Ooh, okay. 31.5, 31.5. Yes. That's not bad. That's, that's pretty good, actually. It's pretty good. It's above average. Yes, that's definitely above average. And then on 42 out of 50 points, Whoa! and then there were none, takes the win. Whoa, that's a massive score. That's huge. It loses eight points for racism. <laughs> that's <basically. laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those eight points are for racism. If it didn't have racism, all five categories, five stars for sure. All right. Well, that's the episode there, I reckon. There we go. Wham, bam. I've, I've done a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've done a mystery. We've done a mystery. That was fun. It's been a while since we've done a uh, bonus battle. Yeah. I like these movies, so we're pretty good. I like it as well, and I like how we did a horror bonus battle. Now we've done a mystery bonus battle. I'm sure we'll probably be, be, be able to find another popular genre. I feel like this would have been a better, like, comparison if we got one of the earlier Sherlock movies. Oh, 100%. Where they were, like, fresh Sherlock stories, like the proper ones. And then it would have been, like, a proper, like, mystery v. mystery. Where it's, like, some hardcore mystery. And then it's like, ooh, which one is better, actually? Mm. Um, Because Sherlock's more of an adventurer-type mystery where you're following this main character. Whereas, you know, the, the Agatha Christie, they're all... It's it's each individual's trapped on this island. You got to figure out what the heck is going on. You know exactly. But the Sherlock movie was alright, but definitely Ag- Agatha Christie took it home with uh, racism this time. It's true. It's true. Well, what were the other Sherlock movies from 1945? We had uh, the House of Fear, which is uh, a bunch of people in a club being killed in their Scottish mansion, <laughs> and then Sherlock shows up. That's basically, and then there were none actually. Kind of. That's that's kind of kind of similar. Um, and then also Pursuit to Algiers, where a king is killed, Ooh. and Sherlock has to go to that country and try and help them Interesting. figure out who it is. Potentially, because I picked the Moriarty one, we got the silly one. That's probably what happened. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, probably yeah, yeah. what happened. But it was fun. It was so good. It was so good. But anyway, um, that's the episode. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, if you like the show, I want to give a big bloody thank you to everyone who reviews us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. You are the heroes. You are my Sherlock Holmes to my Watson. What? I don't know what that means. (laughs) Uh, I hate to break it to you, Sandro, but I'm pretty sure you're the Watson in this scenario. I think I am. No, I think I'm the Moriarty. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Am I am I the Watson? You're the Moriarty and they're the show. <laughs> they're the show. That's that right. About right. That's right. <laughs> I'm having an affair with the listeners and you're just there making jokes. Ooh, oh my. Oh my. <laughs> uh, we are at Oldie Butter Goodie Pod on Instagram, on Facebook for new episodes, stuff and things. We are at Oldie Butter Goodie Pod at gmail.com. We are on YouTube if you want to leave a funny comment 
comment and then I'll make fun of you. <laughs> uh, we are also on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash oldiebuddygoodiepod, where this week is the third episode of the K-Drama Volume 2. The k k k k k k k k drama Yes, Nicolas Cage movies. We did one called Drive Angry, which was fucking ridiculous, and the episode is ridiculous, so check that one out. I love that. That was that was one of my favourite of the k drama so far. Yes, I, I agree. That episode is out on Wednesday. Check it out, check it out, plus ad-free episodes as well if you subscribe to our Patreon. Zach, you got to pick next week's bloody episode bloody fucking episode movies hey you know what's a great idea and i can't believe i've never thought of this before sandro but why did i ask the orphan what his opinion is oh like my what God. what movie should we do next week uh like you know because we always pick the movies but he's always here right like maybe i should let the uh orphan pick one hey orphan which oh, one no. do you want it's a mystery. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, often. Just- I should have expected that at this stage. I feel like I was really setting him up there. Oh, dear me. You got a bunch of options here. Yeah, like Beauty and the Beast. Oh, the live action Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, 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 yeah. The live action Beauty and the Beast, yes. Um, It has Emma Watson and... Um- <laughs> JK, it's the 1946. She's not born yet. Um, You've got Notorious, which is a spy noir a movie about uh, like hunting Nazis by by Hitchcock. It's a bunch of spies. That could be fun. Uh, we've got A Matter of Life <gasps> and Death. Oh my god, that's two things. Yes. Uh, it is about a guy named Peter who appeals to God to grant him a second chance to live after his air crash. Oh my which god. Which I presume is just a plane crash. You've got a Lost City of the Jungle. <laughs> Lost City of the Jungle. Lost City of the Jungle. <laughs> is this an adventure movie? Oh, it's a serial. It's like four hours long. Never mind. Don't nope, pick that we'll one. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta pass on that one. Um, what else could we do? Oh, the, the, there's Orson Welles' The Stranger, Orson Welles' movie. The Harvey Girls? Is that based off the Harvey Bros? No, it's a Western musical. Never mind. But you know, Sandra, mm. you know what I want to do? It's something you've probably watched before. Really? Yes. This is a movie that probably a lot of people have watched around a certain time of year. Oh, you're picking a a a a a horror film for October. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it's it could be considered a horror film, actually. Oh, okay. But it's not for October. A horror film for Valentine's Day. No, no, not not Valentine's Day. Although it does uh, involve a bit of love. Oh, it does involve a bit of love. Is See, it- you've got to figure this one out, Sandra. You've got a detective work to figure this out. It's a bit of a mystery. Mm, does it involve St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> Are you picking the woman in green again? <laughs> Is that what you're no, picking? No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, complete wrong track. Just no, just fail. What other holidays are there? Christmas? Is it a Christmas movie? It might be. Mm. It might be a Christmas movie. Oh, are you picking a movie that is loosely based off a Christmas carol? Yes, I might be picking a movie that's loosely based off a Christmas carol. Oh my god, you're picking a movie about a guy who's like, maybe I'll kill myself, but actually, maybe not actually. Yeah, oh. see, it's got a bit of horror elements, a bit of love elements. You're picking It's a Wonderful Day. In the- <laughs> it's a- <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a Wonderful Day. Uh, no! I'm picking It's a Wonderful Life! I got it wrong! No! <laughs> no, you fucking idiot! Oh, dear. It's a Wonderful Life, which I have seen before ages ago. I actually haven't watched it in a long time, so I think that would be cool to watch it again. Yeah, I mean, you do like Christmas movies. Yeah, uh, canonically. Canonically, I love the uh, Golden Turd, which was the Santa Claus. The Claus of Santa. I love that movie and its weird lore of that movie. And I love poking the lore of that movie Mm. and how it's golden turd of a movie. But It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, Very famously fun, good movie that you've probably watched before. No. I think that would be good. What? No. I don't like Christmas movies. I haven't seen it before. What? I don't like Christmas movies. Everyone's seen It's a Wonderful Life. You're going into this blind? I haven't seen it, yeah. What? 
That's crazy. Well, now we have to watch it, Sandro. I guess. Yep. No, we're watching It's a Wonderful Life, and you're going to either enjoy it uh, for it being a quaint uh, holiday movie, or more likely, hate the shit out of it. Probably. It depends how Christmassy it is, I guess. I like a Christmas carol, though, so I don't know. That's true. That's true. Um, If I recall, it's not actually that Christmassy. It's kind of just like it, it happens around Christmas. I mean, after Prancer, I think it's hard for anything to be that Christmassy. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's nowhere near Prancery, but I'm pretty sure it's like, I don't want to spoil it too much, but um, I, th- I think this one was pretty good. All right. Well, we'll do that next week. It's a wonderful life. More like it's a wonderful episode, maybe, probably. Ooh, that's it. Well, uh, you've got a skedaddle out of, uh, out of, uh, out of that, out of that, uh, out of, out of, Oh, yeah, uh, Dr. Watson. Yeah, oh, that's but the I, guy. I did want to take a look at this body just before I go. I don't think I you go. should take a look at that body, actually. Why are you so insistent I don't look at this corpse? That's suspicious, Sandro. I, now I, I'm suspicious. I feel like if you do have a look, your world might be shooketh and changeth. All right, then I won't. All right, cool. see you later, Sandro. See ya. <laughs> Bye. All right. <laughs> I say, that was very bizarre. Yes. You guys were making fun of me. What the fuck? Yeah, yes, we were. Because you're, you're a bit of a dumb cunt, actually, Dr. Watson. <laughs> That's fair. I am a bit of a dullard. Yes. Compared to Dr. Watson. Wait a second. What do you mean compared to Dr. Watson? Well, Dr. Watson, you know, my assistant. Oh, my God. You were Sherlock the entire time? It is I. <laughs> It is elementary, my dear Sandro, and I have figured out this murder. You figured out the murder by pretending to be Dr. Watson? What's who murdered him? Who murdered it? Was it the orphan? Ah, uh, yeah, probably. Oh. <laughs> Don't you see? Like, he's literally got his hand marks off for everything. <laughs> he was like, he's been screaming it's a mystery this entire time. <laughs> and that's because he wanted to avoid the fact that he, in fact, was the murderer. Oh my god, it was it was you, Orphan. What have you got to say for yourself? I don't know what you're talking about, you blubbing C-section. Don't call me a C-section! Unbelievable! <laughs> yeah. So rude. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to take this uh, orphan boy in to the police, as he's a danger to society. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Um... Uh- Sure, I guess. That's fine. You're not going to try and, you know, no. suddenly escape away in a portal with him when no. I'm not looking? No, <laughs> you could take him. Oh, very good. Well, I'm not suspicious of that at all. Let me light my pipe over here. Oh, let's run away, orphan! We're running away! <laughs> oh, no! Wow! <laughs> ah, I should have suspected such a thing, but Sandro is such a brilliant tactician that I never would have su- suspected. Oh my god, I've fallen off a cliff! I'm definitely dead! I'm dead, Sherlock! You're never going to find me! I, that's not going to work. I pulled that one before, you know. I've fallen off a cliff. I've fallen. And then the twist in season four of your life is going to be that is going to be that Moriarty is alive, but it's actually his sister. Wait, Moriarty is alive? Oh, wait. Except it's his sister? Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I know. The fourth season of Sherlock was pretty terrible. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad.